in thy seed, I'm going to bless you. And in Isaac, you shall be blessed. So he had to wait. He had to wait for Isaac. He had to wait for the miracle. He had to wait for the promise because God said it. And because God said it, God brought it to pass. Now here we are in the 22nd chapter of Genesis. Isaac is about 15, 16 years old. And God wakes up Abraham and speaks to him and tells him, take your son, take your seed, that which I promised you and did bring the pass, take him and offer him up for a sacrifice. And Abraham loaded up his stuff, headed toward the mount to offer up his son because God said so. If you look at our text here, in the sixth verse, Abraham says that Abraham took the wood and the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife. And they were both of them together. And Isaac spake in the seventh verse unto the, unto, and Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, my father. And he said, here I am. Here am I, my son. And he said, behold, the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering. Abraham replied to Isaac, and Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. It is interesting that Abraham was so obedient to God and we know that came through his practice of obeying God. And I'm glad that God allows us the privilege and the honor to grow. We don't get there overnight. And God allows us the privilege and the honor to grow and to mature in the things of God. We may not get it right the first time, but God is so merciful that he affords us opportunities to get it right so that the blessing of God is not aborted or unnecessarily held up in your life. Amen. God is that good. If I might use for, for a word this morning, it would be provisions. 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 And as I was thinking about this, Abraham said to his son, when his son asked, he said, we've got the wood and we have the fire, but we don't have the lamb for the burnt offering. Abraham replied to God to his son was this. He said, listen, you know what? God will provide. In spite of what we lack, he said, God will provide what we need. Thank you, Lord. It is interesting that God is so faithful that we can trust the fact that what we stand in need of that God is more than able to supply. Yes. I understand why David said in the 23rd Psalm, he said, the Lord is my shepherd. He said, I shall not want. David knew that God was more than able to supply what he needed. Glory to God Amen. when he needed it. Oh, yes. He knew that in spite of it being absent, yes. glory. God could make it available because he was God. I mean, there's no limitation to God. I mean, God can make snow out of rain. God can make heat out of fire. God can do what he does because he's God. So he's not limited. I mean, what is impossible with man is possible with God. David knew it. David said, the Lord my shepherd. He understood that. When I watch my sheep in the natural, anything they need, whether it be protection, whether it be food, whether it be provision, he said, as a shepherd, I supply it. So if God is my shepherd, and he is, and if he's the Lord of my life, the bishop over my soul, then God is more than able to provide for me what I need. 
Oh, yes. yes. Thank you. Oh, yes. Yes, Lord. Mm. There is really no lack in God. Amen. I mean, when there's a spot to be filled, God is able, more than able, to run it over with what you need. Amen. Because he's God. He, David said, listen, my cup runneth over. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. Surely goodness and mercy. Why? Because that's what God is. Yes, 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 yes. And he recognized that God was able to fill in the gaps if there was a lack or if there was a need. Yes. God was more than able. Yes. Provisions, provisions, yes. provisions. Yes. God is more than able to do for us what we stand in need of. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yeah. Yeah, I was looking at the dictionary definition. It says provision is the act or process of providing. The act or process of providing. And it says, listen, the fact or state of being prepared beforehand. Beforehand. I said, Lord, I said, your provisions to me have already been established beforehand. Come on. You've already determined that what I need will be what I receive because you've already fixed it up beforehand. Amen. Have you ever gone to somebody's house and they know you're coming and they prepared for you before you got there? Amen. So before you got there, it was made up for you beforehand. See, God's provision is that God who the foundation before the foundation of the world has already provided for you yes. what you stand in need of right now. Amen. See, your health and your wealth, your stuff was already prepared for you before the foundation of the world. Before God said, let there be light, God had already made a way for you in 2012. Amen. Beforehand, I was trying to figure this out. I said, Lord, I have no other way to, under, to, to express provision. He said, just tell them beforehand. You just tell them I did it beforehand. Yes. In other words, you don't have to wait for it to be occupied. You don't have to wait for it to be made up. Just realize that God, before the foundation of the world, has set in place what you stand in need of. Because yes. yeah. that's the kind of God we serve. Yes. And Abraham knew it. His son said, we got the fire. He said, we got the wood. We got the foundation. We got the inspiration. We got everything we need to sacrifice except the sacrifice. Amen. He said, don't you worry about it, son. He said, God will Come on, provide. If God has spoken a word over your life, and God has commanded you to do A, Y, and C. Then understand this, that God is more than able to bring it to pass. Beforehand. That's in your provision. Remember when the disciples were asked to get food for the 5,000? And Jesus said, how much food we got? And the disciples looked at what they had and saw it as insignificant. And Jesus said, what we got? He said, let's just bless what we have. Oh, yes. Because Jesus recognized something when he held it up before his father. He said, listen, this is not for me. It's for them. Yes. Because I'm praying over stuff that you already prepared. Glory to God. You ever prayed for something and God already supplied it? Yes. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. Glory. See, sometimes God doesn't remind you that you stuff you asked for, that he did you good for you. He didn't and you receive it so fast, you forgot your hands. Yes. Oh. <laughs> See, it's like a contingency plan. In other words, God says, before the foundation of the world, yes. I set in place some stuff so that your stuff would be in order when you needed it to be in order. Because right. yes. yes. if this don't work, we got to do that. God said, no, I don't operate like that. I Uh -huh. 
He told his son, he told the man, he said, listen, we're going to be back to work. We're going to worship, but we will be back. Amen. Now, Abraham knew what God told him. Yeah. God told him to go up on the mountain and sacrifice your son. Give up your offering. Yeah. Give up that which I put in your hand to release. Yeah. And Abraham said, you know what? After we worship, mm -hmm. he said, I'm coming back again. And if you look at the 11th chapter of Hebrews, it speaks about that. It said that Abraham knew that God was able to raise up Isaac from the dead. Yeah. That if he killed him, God would raise him up again. Because God can't lie, that was Abraham's promise to God, that he would be the seed. Come on. Woo, glory. Abraham knew that God would provide what he needed. Yeah. Glory, glory, glory. You know, God is proactive in what he does. He's proactive. He has the ability to bring to pass his purpose. So he's proactive in what he does. Yeah. He's not sitting around waiting for it to happen because in the mind of God, it's already set. That's why he can ask you, he said, listen, he says, listen, when you pray, believe that you received it yes, before you have it. Why? Because God says, listen, I'm proactive. It's already done. How can he tell us in St. Matthew 6.33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all other things shall be added. Don't pray for this. Don't pray for that. Because if I can satisfy the birds in the sky, I can meet your needs. Yes. Thank you. The birds don't work, but they got clothes on. <laughs> huh? The birds don't uh, punch a clock, but they get fed every day. Amen. So God says, if I take care of them that have no souls, how much more would I take care of them that do? Yes. Glory to God. I'm more than able. Yes. Because of God. Glory, glory, glory. Look at this now. Look at this. Glory, glory, glory. One little Savior. God is proactive. He's concerned. God is concerned for his purpose to be brought to pass because he's God and that's the way God operates. We need to take the, 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 the shackles off of God and believe God for the uttermost and believe God for everything we stand in need of. God is not limited by our lack of insight. God is not limited by the fact that you don't believe. God still is God all by himself. He's still able to do it. He's still able to make it happen. Glory to God. Provisions, provisions, provisions. Glory, glory, glory. Look what it says here. Glory. In the, in the seventh verse that Isaac spake of his father and said, My father, and he said, Here I am, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And I'm so glad that God is proactive in his purposes because even in Romans 8.28 it says all things work together for good to them that love God and to them that are called according to his purpose. Yeah. God said, listen, I'm proactive in what I do. I've already determined the blessing in your life. I've already determined the plan in your life. All you got to do is walk in it. Yeah. All you got to do is receive it. You don't have to make it happen. God said, it's my provision. It's my provision. I've already determined it. It's what I see for your life. It's my provision. It's what I've already determined for you. So don't fight it. Just walk in it. Receive it. Let God do it. Take God at his word. Oh, obedience. Obedience is a great thing. Abraham would have never reached the level that God had determined for him had he not done what God said. And understand this, for you and I, you'll never reach the level that God has determined for your life if you don't do what God says. You know what God spoke to you in the midnight hour, because God still speaks in the midnight hour. God still speaks in the quietness of your room, the quietness of your car, the quietness of your secret place. God still speaks. So you know what it is that he's been beckoning. in. You know what it is he's been bothering you with. It. And it's really not a bother. It seems like a bother because 
Sometimes we don't want to hear it. Sometimes we don't want to receive it. But we don't understand this. We couldn't wash it off. We couldn't shut it out. And God's still speaking because he's God. Glory to God. So he's very proactive in his purpose. Glory. One of the things that God, in his, in, in his provision, in doing what he does because he's God, God is, is, is concerned about our protection. He's concerned about our protection. In other words, God will be with you to cover you. Abraham went with his son. Started off with him, the son, and the men. And then he left with his son. See, God is determined to protect you. The Bible says that Abraham went on ahead with his son. Why? Because God is determined to hide you, to cover you, protect you. God is concerned about you. God didn't speak a word in your spirit that you would make you fit you by yourself. God is with you to cover you. Yeah. Amen. Whatever God has said to do, God has determined already that in the process of you doing it, I'm going to cover you. I'm going to protect you. According to St. Psalms 91 and 1, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. In other words, God said, listen, when you obey my voice, yeah. he said, you're under my protection. All right. Nothing could have happened to Abraham to do what God had determined him to do because he was under the protection, the auspices of Almighty God. Yeah. God said, you mind, don't you worry about it. I got your back. I'm covering you. That's all right. He went on with his son to handle the business that God had determined him to do. But in the process of his going, he was under the protection and the covering of Almighty God. See, a lot of folk want to cover you. A lot of folk want to say, I got your back. But there's nobody like God when God got your back. God will put you in a place. He'll hide you under his shadow. He'll hide you in the corner. He'll put you in the cleft of the rock. Whatever you need, God will protect you. Why? Because he's our provision. He's our provision. Beforehand, he fixed it. You can't understand why you survived the wreck. Because God protected you. Everybody else has fallen out and God kept you upright. Why? Because he protected you. That's the benefit, that's the advantage of being a believer. Yeah. We are, we, we have a good protection plan. Yeah. Uh-huh. We've got a good protection plan. God keeps us and preserves us for his good. Yeah. Amen. We belong to him. Ephesians picked it up, and I love this. Ephesians 1 and 3 says, Blessed be the Lord, and blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us, or predetermined, unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. God said, I protected you. I have you in my corner. I have you in my secret place. You under the blood and you're covered. You're under the blood and you're kept because of me. That's part of the provision. Because I kept you. Because I'm keeping you. You are accepted in the beloved. Because it's me. God said, I'm your provision. Yeah. You can't make it without me. I'm, I'm the reason why you're blessed. Yeah. I'm the reason why things go in the way they go. Yeah. I'm the reason why the door is being opened and seemingly can't be closed. Yeah. Because of God. Yes. And I'm protecting you. As I protected Abraham and hid him, so do I hide you for my glory. The Bible says we are the made accepted in the beloved. In other words, God said, listen, I love you because I first loved him. So therefore, you're loved as a result of the relationship. Protected. Protect. I don't have to impress anybody because I'm protected by him. I'm covered by him. He's my glory. 
He's my praise. When I wave my hands and give God a praise offering, I'm just giving back to him what belongs to him. Glory! It's his praise I'm giving him. I'm saying, Lord, I thank you. But really, the thanks is not because of something I've done, but the thanks is because of all he's done. Glory! Glory! Yes. Glory! Wonderful God. I get a glory down in my spirit and a hallelujah in my praise. Yeah, it's not because of me, God, but it's because of him. Yes, yes, yes. And what he's done. He's made me accepted yes, in the beloved. Protection. He gives us protection. Not only does he give us protection, but he gives us production. Production. God is with you to produce it. When Abraham went off with Isaac, to handle the business that God had determined Abraham to do, God was going to bring to pass what he had told him to do. It was not something Abraham had to fabricate. It was not something Abraham had to manipulate or bring to pass. God said, if I told you to do it, and if I told you it was going to happen, all you have to do is trust me to produce it. That's a tough thing. Trusting God to produce it. That's why God will show you something before the something even exists. In your spirit, you saw it. And you're waiting on it. And God showed you production of it. But you got to sit back and wait for God to bring it to pass. Amen. Amen. God gave Abraham a word, told him what to do. And Abraham was convinced that even if he did sacrifice his son, that God could produce another son. Glory to God. Raise up even Isaac. Because he recognized that God was able yes. to provide. That was his answer. When Isaac asked the question, we got the wood, we got the fire. He said, but where's the sacrifice? Abraham said, you know what? God will provide. See, that ought to be your answer when you don't see it in the natural. Well, yeah, that's when it hasn't happened yet, but in your spirit, you can taste it. In your spirit, you receive it. And somebody might ask you, where is it? And all you have to say is, God will provide. I know it because he said it. God will Glory to God. Glory to God. Isn't that just like Jesus told Thomas? Isn't that the same thing? He said, blessed are them that don't see it, but believe it. So even though I don't see it, I believe it because God will provide. God will never ask you to do something foolish. God will never send you on a task that already has not been designed for you to accomplish or you to undertake or bring up or bring to fruition. God will never ask you to do something that he was not able to bring to pass. So God says, listen, the fact that I'm more than able to make it happen, you're only out if you will. Your only solace is the fact that God will provide. Amen. He will provide. He'll bring the production. Glory to God, because it's a spiritual thing, beloved. It's a spiritual thing. It's something that we ascertain in the spirit when we are satisfied that because God said it, that settles it. I'm, I'm okay with it, even though I don't see it. I'm okay with it, even though I don't feel something today. I'm all right. See, if you've been saved any length of the time, most of the time you don't have to feel it anymore. Because you believe that if God said it, that ought to be it. Now, I might feel something. There might be a sensing in my spirit. But if I don't feel it, if I don't see it, I know in whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he's able not only to keep me, but to bring the past that which I've committed Unto him. God, I'm not trusting you for not. Huh? I'm believing you for everything. And I know you're more than able. God will provide. Young people, God will provide. Huh? Old people, God will 
provide. Baby, God will provide. Why? Because it's already a full thought. It's already accomplished. God said, already, I've done the task. All you got to do is believe it and take me at my word. Glory, glory, glory. God is with you to produce it. He says, listen, in Romans 8 and 14, it says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. He said, why? For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Because we cry, Daddy, I can expect Daddy to be faithful. All right. Because we cry, Daddy, yeah. I know God will meet my need because I have not any other father but God. Yeah. Right. Uh-huh, that's right. David said, my Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And because we cry, Daddy, we know that God is more than able yeah. to bring it to pass. Glory, glory, glory. It's spiritual, it's worship, it's spiritual. It's what we do. It's the key to our obedience is that we take God at his word and trust him even when we don't see it to know that God will provide. That was Abraham's answer. He said God will provide. St. John 4, 24, when he was talking to the woman of well, he said God is a spirit. And they that worship him must, 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 must worship him in spirit and in truth. Turn, turn to uh, Genesis 28 and 8. Genesis 28 and 8. Glory to God. Glory to God. Provision. Glory to God. God's already brought it to pass beforehand, beloved. That's your provision beforehand. Mm. Glory. Genesis 22 and 8. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. And they came to a place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there. And laid the wood in order and bound Isaac's son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. He took, he did exactly what God had required. He, he laid his son on an altar and bound him upon the wood. And the interesting part is, is that he saw the place. He saw the place where God told him it would be. In other words, God said, listen, I'm not sending you out on an expedition. This is not a, 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 a just a chance operation where I'm just sending you out. This ain't no scavenger, huh? I'm sending you to a place. I'm directing you to a specific point in your life where I'm, I, I told you to go. I told you to do it. And because I told you to do it, you can expect me to provide what you need. Amen? Amen. He sent Abraham there, told him where to go. And Abraham went ahead and did what God told him to do. And the Bible says Abraham stretched forth his hand and took uh, the knife to slay his son and the angel of the Lord. Called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. Here am I. The interesting part is the angel called from heaven. Yeah. See, I believe that when you obey God, that God will speak a word that is, is, is different as well as significant that you would not normally hear in just passing by. But when you have completed the task, when you have fulfilled the assignment, God will speak to you in a way that you only know that it's God speaking and nobody else. The Bible says the angel spoke twice, Abraham, Abraham. Yeah. Now it's interesting, even when Abraham was called of God to go out, God was, Abraham, God would speak once. Even when Abraham was called to even go into Hagar, his, his uh, uh, handmaiden, God only spoke once. Even when God reminded him of his birthright and reminded him that the blessing would come through Isaac, God only spoke once. But when Abraham fulfills the task, glory to God, God spoke twice from heaven. To, to, to secure and to let it know that I'm God and beside me, yeah. there is no other. He wanted to make sure that Abraham heard what he said. Yeah. Yeah. Abraham was about to do what God had commanded him to do, but God said, listen, I have another plan, another purpose, so I'm going to make sure you hear it, so i got to speak twice. Yeah. Right. And sometimes 
that that task you have satisfied. I, I want you to know that I have a plan. And that you're as much a part of the plan as you were a part of my will. And because you're a part of my will, I got to let you know I don't want to be a mistake that you didn't hear what I said. Has God ever spoken to you twice to let you know this is what I mean for you to do? See, because sometimes we can be so convinced and wrapped up, even though we're walking in obedience, God got to speak sometimes twice to let us know that I yet love you, but this is my purpose. And then look, look, look what happened here. Look, look what happened. Huh? He said, and said, lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him, for now I know. That thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, a him a ram caught in the thicket by the thorns. And Abraham went, took the ram, offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mouth of the Lord it shall be seen. Abraham was given a sacrifice to sacrifice. Come on. Even though God had commanded him to sacrifice his son, God's intent was him to sacrifice what God would supply miraculously upon him believing and walking in obedience. Amen. God said, even though you see your son and you're about to do what I told you to do, he said, listen, what I want to provide for you is what you can't provide for yourself. Yeah. He said, listen, so there's the sacrifice in the thicket. God is more than able to provide supernaturally what you need for whatever you need. God will provide beforehand. See, I've heard theologians and i even heard preachers talk about that as Abraham was walking up Mount Moriah, a ram was walking up on the other side. I heard a brother, this one once preached this, that as Abraham made his way up to sacrifice his son, that God had a ram come up on the same side. And by the time Abraham raised his hand up, and God called from heaven that the ram was placed where it should be so that all you had to do was look over and see the ram. Yeah. But I believe this, that as God prepared a fish, it says fish as well as whale. You used to hear folk argue about that. Both is in there, fish and whale. For Jonah, and Jonah was thrown over, over the side of the boat. Yeah. And the moment he was thrown over, a fish came up and swallowed him. I believe that God is able to provide for you what you need, when you need it, miraculously. Amen. I don't believe God got to wait. I don't believe that God has to do something in preparation, but I believe God can give you your provision beforehand. In other words, before the world existed, God had already planned a ram to be in place. Before the world existed, God had already planned a whale to be in place. So as the moment it was needed, glory to God, God said, so be it. So be it. And it was. And God was able to bring not only to pass his purpose, but also bless the life of Abraham. Look what it says here. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time. And said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee. 
in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sands which is upon the seashore, thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in thy seed shall all nations be of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Provision. God is able to give you or envision you for whatever you need. Provision. He says, listen, in blessing, I will bless thee. God said, listen, the same blessing that is upon your life because of your relationship with me, I will multiply it. I ain't got to bring nothing new in the equation. I can multiply it. And with the multiplication of it, I can multiply that. I said, I don't need nobody else to bless you. I can bless you right where you are. I can multiply your space. I can enlarge your borders. I can bring the past what you stand in need of in the process. You got the wood, you got the fire. He said, understand this, I got the sacrifice. I'll give you what you need. I'll supply just what you need. Just what you need, provision. God says, listen, I'll allow you to envision it because I commanded it as well as demanded it because of God. We're coming up on a time in our nation that is past praying time. But understand this, we know who's in charge. God is still sovereign. Jehovah Jireh. God will provide. The mountain of the Lord. Everywhere God is, there's glory. I understand why he would call the mount glorious or call the place where God occupies glorious because when God speaks a word, when God inhabits a place, it's glorious. God will provide whatever you stand in need of this morning. God will provide. He will release the sacrifice. You're there. You brought the wood in the fire. God said, listen, I'll give you the sacrifice because of your obedience.